Alright, well let's go ahead and get started with organizing your PolyLearn course. Uh, in all my video workshops, I like to start out with a support site. And what I'd like to show you now is that um, there are some resources available to you on the support site that will be helpful for you in organizing your course. And you might, might print them out uh, and have them next to you while you're doing this video so that you can write notes on it. Uh, it will definitely make it more user-friendly than trying to write everything down that I'm talking about. Um, so a lot of the things that I am explaining and showing you how to do is going to be on the support site. So if I click on the faculty support button, I'm going to get to the um, support uh, page for the faculty in PolyLearn. And the things that I'm going to be looking at uh, today is the getting started section. Uh, the three things that you would want to have access to is the quick start guide. A quick start guide is going to talk about the sections of the PolyLearn course. The quick guide uh, for organizing your course is going to be talking a lot about what I'm doing in this class and points to certain resources uh, and tools. And then there's also organizing your course. Um, the organizing your course page talks more of um, the whole big picture, like managing your files, uh, how to add your files into PolyLearn, um, what kind of file types and file names should you be using, and then um, how you can manage your content sections. Um, so you might also find that content helpful for you for this particular video that we're doing today. Um, so if I go back to the support site, things that we'll be doing is adding uh, things like adding a file, um, adding folders, adding labels. Uh, we'll also be talking about editing your um, settings so that you can make weeks or topics, and also how to edit your summary. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go into a Blink uh, PolyLearn course. When you open your Blink PolyLearn course, it's going to look something like this, where you have the course, and um, when you're looking at it, you'll have the content um, block that's in the middle. So this is what we're working on today. It's pretty much the stuff in the middle. And if it's topic, which is the, the default setting, uh, you'll have topic blocks. So the first block is for the course business of the course. Um, a lot of, there's a lot of information in other faculty course, courses that I'll show you and, and then how to duplicate that. And then your content below in um, 1, 2, and 3, and so on. So um, these areas here on, on the bottom, 1, 2, 3, 4, is going to be where you put your resources for your students. So how do you do that? Well, let's look at some faculty's courses, and then I can show you how um, that could be accomplished in your course. So let's first look at this course. This is a course that I've designed. Um, I'm currently teaching this course with Blackboard, and I need to move the content into the PolyLearn system. Now, the Blackboard course is totally different because uh, Blackboard setup is a different format. Um, so I'm redesigning the course to fit the PolyLearn layout. Uh, what I've done is I've placed the banner uh, that I had in Blackboard on the top with the welcome information that was on the announcements page. I've placed in the top block. Um, I've also put here a little blurb about what's required for the students before they come to class. And then I've added my files that's important for the class, the syllabus, the course calendar, office hours, and some general information about how to get started in this course. Um, so that full top block and how, how I did that to make this available to my students, uh, if I turn editing on in this course, then I can see the tools and what was used. So this button up on the top right hand side, turn editing on, if I go ahead and do that, um, what I did to make this content available, this content here, is I went to my block and there's this little hand on every single block and it says edit summary. If you click on the edit summary um, icon here, it takes you to the little page that allows you to make HTML for each content block. And this HTML window here can be expanded, which makes it a lot more user-friendly, especially with working with banners and other text. Um, so I can expand this, and then this is an HTML editing window, and I can go ahead and add my image. So this banner image um, with this little button here, insert edit image. This is a JPEG image that I created in Photoshop, and I uploaded the image into this course. Um, then I typed text. Text can be modified by changing the font size, um, font type, and uh, you can also choose um, different um, style settings like heading 1, heading 2, and so on. You can also change the color of the font. 
you can align it differently, bold. So there's all kinds of things in this editing window that you can do. Um, here's the welcome information that was put in here. Now this welcome information on my Blackboard course was HTML, so I just copied and pasted it into this HTML window. If you have Word documents, though, you want to copy and paste into here, I would recommend that you would use these little icons here where it has the W, and this one says paste as plain text or paste from Word. So I recommend from Word that you copy from Word and then click on this, paste from Word, and then paste it in that block. Because um, Word does add some extra stuff in the back end that will make it really hard for you to edit and modify the format of the text in this window unless you paste it from Word. Um, so this is just um, HTML text or text that's typed in here and modified to be HTML and then I changed it to header, header 3 or heading 3 to make this bolder. Um, if you're comfortable with HTML, there's this little HTML uh, button here, edit HTML source. You can look at the HTML source and type all the HTML you want, um, but you don't need to know HTML to do this. I'm going to cancel that because when I type stuff in here, I have the ability to modify and make bullets and colors and all that stuff, and it's writing HTML for me. Um, so I'm going to cancel this because I don't want to save anything I've done because this is already there. Um, but I just wanted to show you that the edit summary is where you would place that content. Um, so where is that in your course? Uh, if I go back to the generic course here, here's my generic course, and I turn editing on, because again, editing must be on in your course. So with the editing on, now I have the ability to modify my content. Uh, so where we were just looking at in my course, the edit summary, that's that little hand. So like I said, every single content block has the little hand, which is the edit summary. The edit summary will allow you to put HTML content on the top of your content block. Uh, so if I click on this edit summary link on the very first block, where I might want to put my banner and welcome information, uh, so I could go ahead and click on this add image, and I can uh, insert an image from my private files. So if I have a banner, I can select that and insert it. I can also, under appearance, specify the dimensions, the um, space between the text, uh, vertical and horizontal space. I can add a border to it. Uh, under advance, I can add alternate text. So if I wanted to uh, specify like an alt tag or a title for that image, I can add that in here. Um, so that's uh, more features within the image. Um, and then I had one person say, well, how do I uh, change the size of your image? Um, once you click on the insert, if you want to do a proportional size, so here's the image here, uh, you can uh, change it. In some browsers, there'll be boxes, and you can click and drag and change the actual uh, size of your image. It appears that in Safari, though, those blocks are not appearing. I'm currently using Safari on my Macintosh, and I mostly use Firefox on my Mac um, to do content uh, development when I'm working on a class. Um, so then I could, after this, I could type text, welcome, and so on. And I can select the text and make the text whatever color, shape, or size I want. I can add bullets and so on. Um, so this is how I can save um, my course uh, information, my welcome information and banner into um, the uh, top of my page. Now I definitely would want to make this image smaller uh, to fit better in here so there isn't a vertical scroll, but that's how you can do that. Now let's look at another example. So if I click on uh, Brian Greenwood's course, so he's done something similar where he's added a banner. Um, he put in some information about himself um, you know, who he is, his office hours, email and phone, and so on, a picture of himself. I really like that idea. And then his course business, um, his syllabus, his, um, any other information related to the class as a whole, and, and some rubrics and so on. Um, so this is what Brian did in his course. Um, how can you add an image over to the side like this? So if we turn editing on in his course, and you can see right here, this is the hand where it does edit summary. So all this stuff on the top was from his edit summary block. Um, so if I click on this little edit summary icon, 
Um, so he, there's his course essentials, this the name he put in, his banner, his information, and his image. And so his image here, um, you can, if you um, modify this image, then you can see that by um, placing this image in, like I was showing you with my course, because I don't want to um, change anybody else's course. Um, when I was in my course, and I edit this, I told you I could put this image um, left, right, or, or other places. Um, so I clicked on that image thing and under advance, or sorry, appearance, um, this is how he could specify if his image is to the right of the page or um, so on. Um, so that's how you can put text on one side and an image on the other side. Uh, let's see what else did Brian do in his course. Um, the other thing that I like is each content section um, so his course is set up, you can tell on the top it says week, weekly outline. His course is set up by weekly, which then puts this date here. Um, but then he's added additional information. What is it that you're doing this week? Um, you can put your objectives, you can put the list of readings or homework they're going to be doing. Um, you can title your lectures, uh, whatever that you think is important for the students to know what's going on that week. And then he added that image again, just to add some, some pizzazz to the class um, that's on the um, right-hand side, so it's a uh, line right. Um, so this class has a lot of that kind of setup. So again, the edit summary um, with then some added resources. So add file, and then he provided um, some information, uh, additional information. So that's Brian Greenwood's course. And, um, you know, all these buttons and stuff, these are because these buttons are available for me as um, an instructor of the course or administrator of the system like I am. Um, when you edit your course, then these buttons are available to you. But when your students are looking at it, it's like having editing off. Um, all those buttons are gone and they're just looking at content only. Um, Brian also heavily uses the latest news, which is like your announcements in Blackboard. So you can see he's got a lot of um, latest news items and the student can always click on the more button to read the detailed information. Um, the other thing about um, the latest news is it will email your students. So if you create a latest news item, it's always going to email the students. Um, there is a button that says email um, now. Let me go to my course again. Cancel this. Um, if you create a latest news item, so latest news, add a new topic. This, this little thing right here confuses a lot of people. I uh, just want to make sure you know, latest news is like uh, Blackboard's announcement, but in Blackboard you could either choose to email them or not. This thing here, email now on the very bottom, is not yes or no, it's now or later. Um, so if, if you're wondering if you can make this announcement without emailing students, no, unfortunately not. In the latest news, it's, well, it's going to always email the student you can either say email right now after I submit or email a little later after I submit, but it will email the students. 